Hello, my name is Sean Gagan and welcome to the WT Vikings Profile Series on Vikings TV, a series dedicated to profiling coaches, players, students and alumni from WIT. Today our guest is around as being one of the best athletic coaches in the country with over 20 years experience of working with athletes at the international, national and inter-county level. He is coach of Ireland's fastest ever woman and current WIT Elite Scholarship athletes Bill Healy. Welcome to WIT Athletics Club Development Officer Shane McCormick. Welcome Shane. Thanks very much Sean. Shane, just going to take you back to the start of your coaching career. How did you end up taking your first steps into coaching? Oh well, yeah, I started. I suppose started coaching prematurely. In some ways, I I I, I got a bad injury when I was um, still competing as an athlete in uh, first year in college in U- in University of Limerick. Limerick, I ruptured a hamstring um, while I was training just before my first senior vest. Uh, I suppose, and that 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 put put in put an end to my um, sprinting career. Um, so I took a hiatus from the sport for two or three years till I finished college and, and then I moved back to Wexford and um, just got involved in my local club um, in, in the town at the time. And uh, just uh, went from there, really. I just started helping out with, there was a, there was a couple of talented athletes, not, none more than th- th- David Hines, who was a former student of, of WIT as well, who went on to become the, the, the 2013 national 100 metre champion. Um, and I kind of uh, went, went from there, really. I just went from, you know... Uh, building a group and started coaching for WIT. I had completed a master's in WIT um, after my degree in, in UL as part of the TSSG um, and I had been competing for the college a little bit as well on the side and then I went into a coaching role with, with WIT um, and really that's kind of stemmed from there. Good stuff. Uh, tell us about your time with WIT so far, Shane. How, how, how have been the kind of main challenges for you so far? Um... Challenges, I suppose it's maybe at, attracting talent to the college, um, not so much from a sporting perspective, but trying to find a mix between academia and, and um, the talent and, like in fairness, the scholarship offerings have, you know, would, be, would be up there with the, be- with the best in, in, in Ireland. It's just maybe some of the bigger colleges have a, like DCU tend to have a little bit of a more of a draw you know because it's Dublin and things like that but look obviously there's a very successful setup down here and it speaks for itself with the recent success mm-hmm. and support that Phil and myself have got with the with, with the college with her support of her masters with the Wit Arena with you know the whole package has just been phenomenal for for the support of Phil and look at it, it has played it not even a small part but a huge part in her success um, of late. You've worked with athletes from many sports uh, including ex WIT student and international rugby player Alison Miller and notably the Tipperary senior hurlers as well. Tell us, how did a Wexford athletics coach end up winning an All Ireland hurling medal with Tip? I was I was a very small cog. I, I don't want to oversell my 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 input there, but um, no, it was it was a, it was a privilege to be part of that. It was a fantastic journey. Look, it was it was, it was something different. I've played Gaelic. I've I've coached my local team in the past and. But I never really had the time to to, get, to give it my full attention, nor did I really want it because athletics was my my kind of grow and, and it was look I have a full time job outside of what I do with coaching, so finding the time um, is it, kind of difficult. But look, no, a mutual friend put put uh, Le- Liam Sheedy in touch with me, and and look, it's, Liam is he's just an, a fantastic character and and an, and an amazing manager and a leader. So it's, it's not somebody that you particularly want to say no or should say no to. You know what I mean? When you get an opportunity like that, you take it. And I was just lucky to be part of that that fantastic um, backroom team that year. You know, uh, as well as having a great coaching career, you're a family man and, had a, and you've had a long career with. Uh, on life financial what has been the most challenging aspect, aspect of balancing all those things as time management you know what i mean like that's that's something i would see as being you know it doesn't work unless you're good with your time right and i'm lucky as well with sun life that they're they're very supportive of me they're also very supportive of phil and um, you know she's been part of um a women in it program in there she's been you know has been part of a horizon mentorship program that sun life put on to to help um female students in in wit um start to springboard their their career out of out of college and prepare them for the real world so um sun life have been a fantastic supporter of both myself and phil over the years and um, but then it just boils down to having a, a very supportive and caring wife who gives me the time and the ability to to juggle all these things you know so you just have to make it work you know yeah uh, as you mentioned you've been working with phil since about 2014 the 100 meter and 200 meter national record holder can you talk us through your journey so far kind of the major kind of ups and downs 
yeah, plenty of ups and downs. Yeah, so like it, all, it started off, Villa just started in college first year, just nursing, which obviously doesn't sound conducive to mm-hmm. the international sprinting, and it, it ultimately didn't uh, didn't end up being it. But um, I suppose her first year together with great success, she 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 won national senior hundred meter title. She went to, to her first senior majors in Zurich, and um, looking to, not to get out of the heats, just one spot for making a semi. So the signs were great. In second year. The nursing, the, the work in the wards didn't, you know, didn't really help out. So it wasn't a great year, but Phil decided to make a, ch- a change of career and moved from um, nursing into um, into a hedge dip in UCC to move into more of a kind of an IT role, which ultimately she ended up in, in, in doing a master's in, in WIT to move closer to to myself and the training group. So look, we've had, Phil is running a major, major tournament every year. Um, she's, she's always been, you know, making slow slow and steady progress but in 2018 i suppose she had the big jump where she broke the 100 200 meter records and she she came 11th in in the european 200 meters um in berlin and then was unlucky in 2019 when we were about to drive on again she broke her foot had to come back from that and, and ended up making the fi- still making the final of the world universities off five weeks of, of running so um she's she's had a you know definitely had her ups and downs but I think what we saw last weekend shows that the, the talent was there and it was more just a matter of time before she got to where she needed to get to. Yeah. Uh, looking forward to the next few months Shane. what are your hopes and what will preparations look like in the build-up to the Olympics in the summer? Yeah so it's heads down now we, we'll, we'll go into um we'll go into a bit of a you know a, a training fa- phase again now and um, for about eight weeks um, she'll have the world relays in Poland uh, potentially at the start of May, and then probably just another little bit of training, and then sort of into race meets. Then in June, it's not a it's not a huge amount of time up to the closing date for Tokyo. But she's she's um, she's sitting pretty in the rankings for the two hundred. So we 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 probably need to get two or three four hundred meter races now to back up her her indoor exploits. Um, but that's looking good also. Um, so yeah, it's it's going to be it's going to be. A quick, a quick season to up to the end of June, and then she'll have four or five weeks before for Tokyo. Please God. Yeah. Um. Last question, Shane. Just going to watch you on the spot. Small bit. What would be kind of the one piece of advice you give to aspiring coaches coming in today? Uh, be be rootless in in the desire to want to know more, and always be rootless in the desire to want to win. And I don't mean that in a bad way. But you, if you have both of those, if you if you if you if you want if you want to win, you need knowledge, right? So you have to pursue both of them to 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 the to the you know to the the best of your ability, right? And I don't coaching is not always about winning. Don't get me wrong, right? But a lot of it is about a lot of what I do is is it's holistic. It's it's having you know it's it's giving people an outlet. It's making sure there's longevity in the sport. But I think that will to succeed will will drive your 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 thirst for knowledge. And I think knowledge makes everybody a better coach, you know, and don't have any egos, like just talk to everybody, be a sponge, steal, beg, borrow and steal off other coaches um, and and just talk and reach out. Like coaches want to share knowledge. They, you know, the, the best don't have any secrets really. Thanks, Shane. Shane, thanks for coming on. Uh, on behalf of everybody at the WIT, I just want to say how proud we are of all the work you do with your athletes and uh, I wish you the very best for the coming ones. No, I really appreciate the support that um, WIT and, and, and WIT Arena have, have given myself and Phil over the years. It's, it's been, uh, it's, it's hard to, um, to state how important it has been. Thanks, Shane.